Today you will see the Matrizians in action. We're going to show you how to hack an ECU. Um, we have five Matrizians here with us today. Praveen Suvarna, who is leading the Altazar and Embedded Development Team. Praveen, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Pravin Suvarna. So currently I'm responsible for Atosar and Embedded Development Department here at Matrix. So we are focusing uh, more on Atosar projects into the functional safety and also the automotive safety and security. So I'm really excited about today's uh, video and uh, to show you a bit on the automotive security front. Thank you, Pravin. So we have Arya who was a uh, fully involved in making this demo. Arya, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Uh, hello, I'm Arya. So I work with Praveen uh, and uh, support him in the embedded system development and uh, testing activities. And it's been really exciting to work on uh, this project. Thank you, Arya. Uh, then next we have Falgun, who is um, also involved in the, making the entire demonstration that we will be showing today. Falgun, a little bit about yourself for our audience. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Palgun. Um, I again work with uh, Praveen. Um, uh, we work on um, the embedded development, also uh, testing and some things uh, related to safety uh, in automotive uh, domain. Um, I'm really excited to show the demo of small car hacking project today. Thank you, Falgun. Next, we have Jay. Oh. So Jay is also involved in this car hacking project. He's been working tirelessly. So Jay, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Jay. Uh, so I support Praveen in uh, Autosar uh, topics, uh, basically mainly related to safety and security. And uh, I've been working on this demo. Thank you, Jay. And finally, we have Klaus. Klaus has been uh, very helpful in setting up this entire demo. Klaus, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, I'm Klaus. I will show you later on the used hardware for this demo and uh, how this is connected. Thank you, Klaus. So before we start the demo, I want to tell a, a little bit about uh, how excited I am. So this project started a um, long time ago. We have, been, um, we, have been, we have been developing a series of prototypes, and today we're going to show you one of them. Uh, the reason I'm really, really excited about is the team, the team that I'm working with, the team I just introduced. It's a really, really fun because of their, their enthusiasm, because of their motivation and a tireless effort. So I will hand it over to Falgun to talk a little bit about uh, the setting, the in, introduce the project. Falgun, why don't you introduce the project a little bit? So today we'll be uh, um, looking into uh, hacking of a... A small car. N to simulate this environment, we have uh, done on a, a small ECU. So, um, an introduction for this, like why the security is important in a car. Uh, in the past decades, we have several OEMs who concentrate mainly on the uh, security. Um, now, with the advent of uh, autonomous driving, all the automotive industry moving towards self-driven cars. Uh, it is. It has become the safety has become a uh, um, major priority, with all the connected cars um, to get the data uh, at the real time. Um, if there is an un unauthorized access to these data, there will be uh, very catastrophic outcomes. Um, and because of this, uh, even ISO uh, is coming up with a, a dedicated uh, security concept for, um, uh, which is called ISO 21434. Um, now, what, what happens uh, in when a car is hacked? So typically, a, a hacker would want to, you know, maybe unlock doors, um, hack into the RPM of the, uh, to display a, a different RPM on the dashboard, uh, to uh, turn on or turn off the car, um, and maybe, uh, you know, say, uh, send uh, uh, malicious scan packets, um, <laughs> And then maybe you know send uh, some of the uh, change some of the firmware codes. Um, so these are the uh, some basic stuff uh, a hacker can do. Now um, a real time example of uh, uh, hacking uh, this happened in um, uh, United States. 
so two hackers, uh, Chris and um, Charlie. So they um, hacked into a live or running a Jeep, uh, and uh, a person who was running, who was, this was an experiment. So he was driving the Jeep on a highway, and then uh, the uh, remotely, uh, these two hackers were able to get into the system, and uh, they were able to control the speed, control the steering wheel, uh, which is very dangerous if it is done by an actual hacker. So today we wanted to show that um, you know hacking is possible and uh, um, the basic um, things that are required to hack into a, uh, a car. Now, uh, what is a car made up of? So the car is typically made up of ACUs and there will be, uh, a modern car will be of 70 to 80 or 80 to 100 ACUs. Now what is an ECU? Um, an ECU is, is nothing but an embedded digital computer. It, it, uh, uh, it has um, a dedicated functionality. So maybe to read uh, some sensor data, to provide, to process those data, to provide outputs uh, to the actuators, um, these are the functionalities of ECU, um, and then in the, so the common examples of ECUs are uh, a body control ECU, uh, an engine control ECU, uh, speed control ECU, door control ECU, um, like this. Now, uh, in a car, um, these ECUs are connected uh, via CAN bus. Now, as you can see here. Um, so um, we have taken a small example here. There are some five ECUs. All ECUs are connected over a CAN bus. And um, CAN is a, a broadcast protocol. So each node or each ECU acts as a master. So any uh, ECU can send message over the CAN bus and uh, that message will be broadcasted to all the ECUs. So anyone can get the message and then read the message. So typically what, what would happen is so say for example, uh, the body control module wants to say, unlock all the doors. So the body control module ECU will put a message here on the CAN bus, and this will be delivered to the door control ECU, to the speed control ECU, to the transmission control ECU, and also to the engine control ECU. Now, uh, in a normal environment, what happens is the door control ECU, uh, each of these messages will be uh, having a unique code. So the door control ECU just checks for this particular code in the message and then decodes this and the other ECUs will just discard these messages. Now, uh, why is this important in today's uh, topic is because if we hook on uh, make our own hack ECU and then hook on to this canvas, we can also start getting these messages. So what would uh, typically happen is we put a small hack ECU here, uh, and then we connect to the CAN bus, and then when this message is sent by the body control module, this message is also received by the hack ECU. Now in the hack ECU, we need not worry about the uh, uh, Unicode because now we start get, uh, receiving all the messages, and then we start analyzing, and then we can do, uh, we can get the access into the functionality of the car. Now, um, one other thing we wanted to show is how to hook onto the CAN bus. Um, there are two ways. One is uh, via OBD cable, and the other way is to find the CAN bus in the car itself, um, uh, rip the wire, uh, and then the CAN bus is made of three uh, wires. One is CAN high, CAN low, and the ground. So hook on these three wires onto the ECU, and then you're, um, you can start sniffing all the CAN messages. Now, uh, coming to the OBD, it's an onboard diagnostic port, which is provided in all pretty much all the cars. This is for the diagnostic purpose, uh, for any of the mechanic to view all the data. Uh, so what um, the, the, the portion of these OBD ports typically will be under the dashboard. And um, I can show you a small OBD port, how it looks like. So this is the OBD connector. Now, if you can uh, locate the OBD connector uh, below the dashboard, you'll be seeing these many, uh, the 16 pin um, connector. So the most important pin here would be pin number four, which is uh, chassis ground, pin number five, which is signal ground, uh, pin number 12, and uh, pin number uh, six and 14, those are can high and can low, and then pin number 16 is the voltage source, uh, the 12 volt source. So uh, by connecting this uh, to the ECU or to the uh, any laptop, you can start uh, sniffing all the can messages. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how 
is, is uh, how this, this thing directly sends and receives message from the CAN, um, the OBD? So the OBD plug, uh, it has CAN high, CAN low uh, wires. So when you connect, it is, uh, it, it is nothing but your OBD is already hooked onto the CAN bus. So you, uh, when, when you're completing the connection, you're basically hooking onto the CAN bus. So whenever a message is being sent uh, on the CAN bus, so you start receiving uh, on the CAN high, CAN low, uh, onto your uh, laptop or any device that you have connected. And also in a car, uh, there will be um, a periodic messages, the status that be, uh, that will be uh, being sent um, from various ECUs. Uh, say, for example, um, the status of the engine or the status of the fuel or um, uh, the RPMs uh, at which the car is running. So these messages you can start receiving. Okay. Does it mean theoretically with OBD2 port, theoretically you can reach any issues in the car? Uh, pretty much, yes. Uh, but there will be some security um, uh, for the very uh, important uh, ECUs. And if you can um, get the secured access, you can reach uh, any ECUs in the car. Thank you, Falgun. So uh, the next part of the settings, how um, the hacking setting has been, has been done, will be shown by Klaus. Okay, I show you the uh, demo uh, installation we used. You see it here, and we have one uh, development board from NXP. It's a standard processor in it from uh, NXP, and it's a board is the uh, S32K118. It's a standard processor used in the automotive uh, area. This board has a CAN interface, and for example, it has also a LIN interface. So we also can act like a bridge between CAN and LIN if we want. And here, here we have a demo ECU program running. And we try to hack this with this hardware. This is a Raspberry Pi standard hardware with a Linux uh, operating system. This is connected via an Ethernet cable to the PC and uh, with a an USB cable for uh, programming or for power supply. And these are connected here with these cables. We have the CAN bus. And on the other side, we also have a CAN sniffer for debugging these uh, things. This is CAN can OE. And uh, Okay, that's the uh, hardware we use for our demo. And can you tell us a little bit about the ECU the, that we're, what, what kind of processor, what kind of uh, okay. uh, program running on the ECU? Okay, the ECU is, uh, the processor is a S32K118 from NXP. It's a standard processor used in the automotive area. And it's programmed by a development system. Uh, it's uh, DS32. It's a free of charge development system. You can develop, and develop programs on this ECU. And uh, Aria will tell anything about the program uh, which is running there. Thank you, Klaus. So, Aria, why don't you tell us a little bit about the ECU program? What does it do? What are the functionalities of this ECU? So, as Klaus explained, uh, we have uh, the ECU that is uh, the NXP board, and there is a very simple program running. Uh, so, we have the uh, CAN bus up and running, and we have few CAN messages going on the bus. And uh, right now, we have several messages like uh, volume up, volume control, volume up, volume down, and we also have. Uh, fuel indication message that uh, shows the fuel level as well as it also shows the fuel uh, if the when the fuel level goes below a particular threshold we have a fuel light that goes on and uh, we have uh, for simulation purpose we have a small panel designed in Cano and uh, we have it uh, displayed here and I would like to explain uh, the block diagram in a simple way so uh, 
as explained we have the NXP board and the Raspberry Pi connected and this Raspberry Pi is going to do uh, act like a can sniffer and check what kind of messages is going on and uh, what kind of messages is being transmitted in the CAN bus and we have the CANU which is used to uh, portray or display the kind of CAN messages and using the Raspberry Pi we can see how this CAN sniffer can affect these CAN messages. So I have a question here. Um, so in this settings, uh, are we simplifying anything or is it, is it close to real? How close is, is it to the, to the real life? Uh, okay, so uh, we are considering that there are no uh, CRC embedded into the CAN message as of now. This is our first prototype. So uh, right now we are just considering the CAN message in its raw form without any um, you know, uh, security features like CRC. From, from from real life, the, the delta is there is no CRC. There is no CRC. There is CRC, CRC that is actually the, the real, real life yes, that we use. So if you had CRC, then you had to uh, uh, take another step, which is reverse engineering the CRC, right? Yes, that would be like a brute force method, which uh, we would be following in order to figure out what kind of CRC or uh, what kind of uh, hash algorithms that uh, the the system is using. So that would be the next step. So right now it's a simple um, sh sh simple setup to show that you can always hook on to the CAN, CAN bus and just read what kind of CAN messages you're getting and looking at the CAN messages, you can reverse engineer and find out what kind of uh, effect the CAN message is going to have in your ECU. Fantastic, so thank you Arya. Uh, so now we'll move to Jay. Jay is going to talk a little bit about uh, the, how the entire setup is done. So as uh, Arya and Klaus said, we have the setup here. Uh, so as you can see, uh, just for simulation purposes, which you'll see on the screen, we have the Kanoe uh, and we have created a simple uh, UI that shows a few panels with the uh, fuel meter display and the fuel indicator light. And uh, here we have uh, we have made a crude connection with the CAN to hook the Raspberry Pi onto the CAN. So to talk a bit more about the Raspberry Pi, we have used a WaveShare uh, CAN hat uh, to enable CAN communication on the uh, Raspberry Pi, which does not have it by uh, default. And it, it's just a plug and play device, which you can just uh, uh, buy it online and uh, plug it in and we're good to go. So it interfaces the uh, SPI interface of the Raspberry Pi with the uh, CAN interface. And uh, yeah, you just need to connect it to the CAN. So now uh, we're good to go and we have uh, enabled an SSH connection from our PC on the Raspberry Pi. Jay, before you move in, so just to make things clear, mm -hmm. this is your actual issue that you're trying to hack? Yes. And that is the simulation, simulation yeah. of and Can we say it's an ECU a, a cluster? Yeah. The cluster. Mm -hmm. And this is the bad guy, the hacker is here. Yes. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Uh, so for today's uh, demo, uh, we've used uh, uh, Python uh, to program the Raspberry Pi and to use a CAN. So we just uh, installed the CAN utils package already available for Python. Uh, so if I just use a... a can dump on the Raspberry Pi, I can see all the messages that uh, are available on the can. So uh, as you can see on the screen, we have uh, multiple messages coming on the can. And uh, so uh, for a person who's, who's not developed these programs, who has not programmed these issues, these are just uh, messages. And uh, so if you see, there are two different uh, arbitration IDs that are possible like that we can see. And uh, so uh, from here starts the uh, actual work where we have to uh, analyze these messages, uh, see how they change. Uh, so, so like what you see is a complete candom. So I can also filter for a particular uh, arbitration ID so that I can only focus on that. And uh, if you see like, uh, so uh, based on this, we have identified that uh, so the ID, the message with the ID 407 is uh, some kind of an indicator uh, because uh, you can see that when it crosses a particular threshold, uh, the uh, second byte changes. So based on this uh, deduction, uh, we have uh, 
program written which can override that. So if you see on the other screen, uh, the simulator, uh, the fuel gauge must be going uh, down. And now uh, I can force it uh, to always stay up. So if you see now, uh, I have understood that from the candom, I have understood that the, uh, this message is coming uh, pretty slow. And uh, now I have written a program to uh, put it onto the canvas at a faster rate so that it always overrides the actual ECU. So now what the messages, the Raspberry Pi puts overrides the message that the actual ECU puts onto the can. And I can, uh, uh, I can make the ECU behave or the, the other ECU the, that's a cluster, simulated cluster behave exactly as I want. So uh, as, as uh, I told you, this requires uh, an analysis of the messages on the CAN and uh, a bit of a reverse engineering. Uh, okay, so now uh, when we uh, run the script, the Raspberry Pi overrides the actual ECU. And uh, so it uh, creates, a, it sends out fake uh, status of the fuel uh, status uh, onto the cluster and the driver can not know that uh, that he is running out of fuel uh, so this is just one instance where we can where we have uh, simulated so and this was just to show that uh, the can uh, bus can be easily hacked into uh, we can be easily hooked onto uh, and uh, another node can easily send messages so it's all about uh, identifying what each can message does each can signal does and duplicating the same with our uh, interceptor ECU. Thank you, Jay. So if I understood this, if we want to break down the steps of car hacking, the first thing you have to have is the access to the car. In this case, physical access, because this is uh, OBD. Over, over protocol, OBD. Yeah. Once you have access, you can sniff the CAN messages. Once you sniff the CAN messages, what you have to do is try to understand or reverse engineer the protocol. What, what does that mean? Because you will probably do not, do not have access to the actual messages. Mm -hmm. um, once you have done that, um, in, the, in the real scenario, there will be CRC enco encoding. Mm -hmm. You will have to uh, apply brute force to decode it. Mm -hmm. And then you will be able to temper and uh, replay, uh, perform replay attack. Yeah. So we can uh, fake the behavior uh, over again, yeah. So which part in this, uh, in this process you think will be the most difficult? I mean, I can, I can totally understand that sniffing is not the most uh, yeah. difficult part. Which part will, will t um, when, when a real hacker will come and try to hack an ECU, where will, will the hackers have to spend most of their time? So the two most important parts will be, one will be understanding the logic, understanding what each signal stands for. So this will take some time. So uh, here it was uh, more straightforward because we had only uh, two bytes of data in a particular message and uh, we could see a pattern of behavior. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, this pattern of behavior might not be as obvious. And in this case, we'll have to uh, also see the uh, actual behavior. We'll have to uh, do a trial and error basis or a brute forcing on the actual car. So we have also uh, tried this part. And the second part would be, of course, uh, uh, if the message is encrypted or if uh, like they, are, they use some basic uh, secured sessions, so to break this would be the next difficult part. So if, if uh, somebody is able to do these two, then uh, the other parts will be pretty easy uh, because uh, you don't even need to connect to, through an OBD. You can also just uh, use a CAN bus, the actual uh, the physical harness. You can just hook in like we have done here. We have done it in a crude method, but it can also be done on the real car. So there is no uh, uh, there is no real protection on that in that sense in the car. So it's not very difficult to not use the OBD and just use the actual can wires. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. So this was fascinating. So if you have any question, comments, or remarks please feel free to write comment below or write us at podcast at matrix.de. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next episode.
In this podcast show, we bring in the industry leaders and experts in the automotive domain to share their experiences along their journey. The mission of our podcast is to start a dialogue that will allow us to understand the development of automotive industry and where the automotive industry is going. You can ask questions to our guests directly. Just send us an email to podcast at matrix.de. We'll schedule a call with you during the recording and you'll be part of our show. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. Please share this video to help others get enlightened as well and that would mean a great deal to us. See you in the next episode.